Hey guys, on today's video, as part of our continuing series on Bring That Mercedes Back From The Dead, I'm going to be showing you how to change your pre-filter and your regular spin-on filter on your Mercedes diesel. Now, the previous episode, we did the diesel purge. We ran two bottles of purge through uh, the engine. And now, after you do that, you're going to need to change the filters. So I'm going to uh, just start up at the top here. This is the pre-filter right here. I'm sorry, this is the spin-on filter. And I'm just going to uh, loosen this bolt here. And let me get something to catch what may fall. Sometimes it can make a little bit of a mess. Okay, and I'm just going to loosen this bolt. Okay, once it's loose, you can just spin it on. It, it spins off, I'm sorry, just like a, most oil filters. In fact, it, a lot of people mistake this for an oil filter. There we go. I'll show you what this looks like a little later. Well, anyway, so the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, the O-ring that we want to replace is right here. And just make sure that there's nothing on the bottom there. We're going to take a paper towel wipe that down and I'll show you what the o-ring looks like all right so here is my new o-ring right here and there's actually two of them on here but generally um, you just pretty much just replace this top or the one closest to the bolt head okay just slide it out of the groove now unlike the O-rings on the oil filter stand. These oftentimes will still have some pliability to them, even when they're pretty old. But it's a good idea to uh, go ahead and replace it. Okay, so the O-ring is now in there. And I've already wiped the bottom of the oil filter housing off right there and there was a lot of uh, there's a lot of crud on there I'll do it again okay now I'm going to take my brand new oil filter here and if you want you can lubricate the um, steel right here with a little bit of diesel fuel if you have it I'm just going to use just a, a touch from the old filter I mean you don't even hardly need just a drop of it okay then I will put the bolt back in like that and then I'll go ahead and put the filter back up here if you're having trouble getting this on because it's can be a little tight in here if you'll lift the bolt up just a little bit okay like I'm doing and then start it that way you can feel it engaging the threads because if you don't have it at the perfect angle you'll sit there and fight with it because there's just not a lot of clearance here all right, so once I get it pretty much hand tight, I'm gonna hold the filter and just snug the bolt up. Okay, 
just like that. That's perfect. All right, next we're going to work on the pre-filter. All right, here's where it can get a little messy or more messy. I've got a brand new pre-filter here. It's clear. I like these uh, hinks because you can see through them. A lot of the ones that you buy now are opaque and you can't see through them. So I'm going to loosen the... The easiest way to do this that I've found is to loosen the bottom where the little secondary hose goes into the primer pump and just bring the whole assembly up here where you can work on it. All right, so now I'm gonna disconnect this and put this in this side. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten it just quite yet. Then I'm gonna take this piece here and it's just a lot easier to do it from up here than it is down there. Okay. And then I'll put this end on the filter. Now I want to make sure I got these clamps orientated so that it's easy to get at it with the screwdriver. Now we can actually see what's in the filter. Now, here's where if you did not have a good working primer pump that you would be in trouble. This is empty. The fuel filter, the main one and the secondary one, or the primary one, sorry. So here's where you need to, uh, and I want to show you guys this because I would not have been able to fill this back up with the old primer pump because it would have just been leaking and sucking air everywhere. So this, so easy. Okay, so this is a little disturbing, but there is, this thing is just full of debris. Um, let me see if I can crack that open and show you guys. This is what we really want to look at. All right, now that is disgusting black I'm not that could be algae it could be some uh, just debris and sediment in the tank These filters are tough all right, so it's a very similar construction to an oil filter. It doesn't have an anti-drain back valve, but, you know, it's, there's not a lot of junk in there. Um, and, of course, this is black. I don't see any chunks of anything. And I, I think, if I remember correctly, I put this on years ago. Uh, before I parked it so but it caught it's catching stuff which is what it's supposed to do so um, there's no leaks everything's looking good I'm gonna go ahead and discard all this stuff we don't need that anymore um, hopefully this is helping you guys whether you have a Mercedes or not maybe you have a diesel you know they're all gonna have the same 
basic maintenance requirements. There may be a little bit different application and execution from uh, model to model or make to make, but you know, it's the principle is the same. Even if you have a gas engine, um, you know, you need to do your fuel filter maintenance minus the purge, of course. Anyway, guys, thank you for sticking with me. A lot more videos to come. There's a lot of exciting videos to come. I can't wait to start buffing on the car. There's still a lot of maintenance items we got to do. Got to get those tires, but I got to get the thing roadworthy first. There's a few more things we need to do before I got the guts to uh, take it out on the road. So uh, I will see you guys on the next video.